tonight, a stormy Christmas forecast for Eastern Australia as heavy rain and hail lash southeast Queensland. Also tonight, Israel claims it has control over most of northern Gaza as troops advance south. Thailand moving a step closer to legalising same-sex marriage. And crowds hit the markets and stores for last-minute gifts and food for Christmas feasts. Good evening, Bridget Rollison with a national edition of ABC News. Large parts of southeast Queensland have been thrashed with severe storms one day before Christmas. The Bureau says the wild weather will continue across the southeast and Victoria into tomorrow. It seems that the east coast can't catch a break, with residents of far north Queensland still cleaning up from the floods. Oh, the drama of a Christmas storm. Oh, the boat's gone! Severe weather sweeping across much of southeast Queensland today bringing heavy rain, damaging winds and hail as large as eight centimetres in some areas north of Brisbane. Thousands of homes are still without power. Probably the most intense activity occurred over, over, over an area stretching from Stamford or just north of Stamford, across Strathpine, Debra and then across into Redcliffe and as well. And more is on the way for the East Coast all the way down to Victoria. What we're asking for people is to uh, be alert but not alarmed and to take extra care as they move around the state during this Christmas period. In flood ravaged cans is a festive season like no other. Keep your chin up, be positive. The water may have receded but the memory is still there. Mate, it was pretty, pretty upsetting, it's full of mud. You know, the water would, had, had gotten through the house. This family managed to save Christmas presents but lost almost everything else. Those presents, we, we, I put them up high so they survived. Um, the Christmas tree survived. That's the main thing. Hey, Alexa. The devastation not enough to deter these jet setters. I was nervous we wouldn't be able to get a flight up here, but like, watching the Cairns Airport, they turned it around so quickly. We did not... Uh decide to delay our trip we just thought we'll come and try and do what we can <laughs> on a visit to the region the opposition leader joined the tourism industry pleading with travelers to not cancel summer holidays uh, these are tourist operations who are still conducting their businesses uh, and they want bookings not cancellations you've seen weeks of imagery um, of flooding, of previous cyclones, uh, it creates a great sense of anxiety within the traveller. We really understand that. Um, that's why it's so important that people reach out. Hundreds of flood affected residents will gather for a community lunch tomorrow, lifting the spirits for what will be a very different Christmas, not just here, but along much of the east coast. Victoria Pengilly, ABC News, Cairns. The wet weather is also ramping up in Sydney tonight. The New South Wales State Emergency Services is responding to multiple call-outs for flash flood rescues and there have been major disruption to flights at Sydney Airport. Let's get the latest from reporter Nabil Anishar. Nabil, what can you tell us about the conditions at the moment? Well, the conditions are, are pretty bad. I'll start with the airport. A Qantas spokesperson has told the ABC that multiple flights had to be delayed and had to be diverted uh, to Melbourne Airport where they'll refuel and then fly back to Sydney. There are also disruptions to the roads around the domestic flooded, impacting traffic and surrounding areas. Where I am in, in Pagewood right now is an affected area where uh, 30 townhouses have been inundated with water going into the garages. Um, SES crews are currently responding to more than 21 active incidents since 5 p.m. Uh, that have swept through the city. Uh, a total of 94 incidents just in the last three hours. Uh, some of these rescue operations include people trapped uh, in flash flood water inside their cars. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, water coming into their homes, into their garages, causing some damage. There's an in increased risk uh, of contamination as the water damages uh, vehicles and enters into homes. Uh, the contamination comes from... Uh, fuel tanks and uh, other materials and debris that gets carried away with the flash uh, flood water. Also, the forecast for the next couple of days, that's Christmas Day and Boxing Day, is for that 
uh, storm cell to repeat again. Uh, so the SES crews are anticipating that they're go it's going to be all hands on deck, more uh, calls like the ones they're receiving today. In the last 24 hours alone, uh, volunteers have responded to 143 incidents uh, and are gearing up for more of these rescue calls over the next 48 hours. Thanks to Bill. Nabil al Nashar there in Sydney. As Christmas approaches, there's no let up in fighting in Gaza. Israel says it's arrested 200 members of the Hamas and Islamic Jihad groups in the past week. Some, it claims, have been hiding among civilians before surrendering. It's battling Hamas militants to gain full operational control of the north of the Gaza Strip and is stepping up operations in the south. Israel is expanding its offensive. Its troops are close to gaining full control of northern Gaza and they're about to focus on the south. People in central Gaza have been told to leave. A new evacuation order is in place. Many here have already been displaced several times. They have to try and escape this. The Hamas-controlled government says more than 20,000 Gazans have now been killed, many of them children, and tens of thousands injured. My sister was next to me, but she was trapped under the rubble. I don't know if they got her out or not. She was alive. Israel says it demolished a massive Hamas tunnel network underneath Gaza City this weekend. This video, it says, shows military units uncovering a command centre. Around 2,000 Israeli protesters rallied in a rare anti-government protest since the start of the war. We need to make sure that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu will go away. We've been protesting for a year now and it's just getting worse. So it needs to be now. They're calling on the government to secure the release of all remaining hostages. If you want a ceasefire, that from Israel's perspective, can only happen with the release of hostages. Uh, Hamas isn't going to release hostages because they've suddenly become humanitarians. They do so because they respond to the pressure. In the shadow of the war, Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank has cancelled Christmas celebrations. Normally it's the place where Christians commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ, but instead they're lighting candles and praying for peace. Alison Horn, ABC News, Jerusalem. Chakia has observed a minute's silence to remember those killed in a mass shooting at a university in Prague. Church bells tolled at noon and flags flew at half-mast on the National Day of Mourning. 14 people were shot dead at Charles University last week by a student who then killed himself. Police are still trying to uncover a motive. A mass was also held at a cathedral in the city to honour the victims. A former journalist has been banned from running against Vladimir Putin in next year's presidential election. Russia's Electoral Commission voted unanimously to reject Yekaterina Duntseva's candidacy, citing errors in her submitted documents. The independent politician was planning to run on a platform to end the war in Ukraine. Ms Duntseva says she'll appeal the decision at the Supreme Court. Police are hunting for five men after an alleged kidnapping in Western Sydney. Officers were called to Guildford West just after midnight following reports of a home invasion. Police believe a group of armed men stormed their way into the building before forcing a 29-year-old man to leave with them. He returned home uninjured a few hours later. Detectives believe he may have been targeted. Two burnt-out cars were found at two separate locations nearby. They're now investigating whether the three crime scenes are linked. Across Australia, shoppers have hit the town to buy last-minute gifts and snap-up supplies for Christmas Day feasts. While the sun was welcomed in some parts of the country, wild weather is altering plans for residents along the east coast. One day left to cram in the shopping. Beautiful fresh oysters shot on premises. Early risers in Melbourne seized a fresh catch at Queen Victoria Market. 
and across the country, retailers bombarded with those trying to bag a bargain. I want some roller skates. Many had no plan. I just anything. Anything. No, I didn't even know I was looking for it, but I found it. But after a year of rising inflation, they're staying savvy. Thank you. It's been a fairly subdued Christmas shopping period. We did see record sales through the Black Friday Cyber Monday weekend. While Christmas is usually about the man in red and white, in Melbourne it was the girl in blue that everyone wanted to see. And she's even setting records. Usually we anticipate around 1.2 million visitors throughout the Christmas period. So far this year we've had over 1.8 million visitors. The sun has drawn people out in droves as they race to complete their shopping lists. But it isn't here to stay. Parts of the country are set for a wet and windy Christmas day as thunderstorms lash the east coast from parts of Queensland to Victoria. In Sydney, the sudden downpour caught some unaware. And thunderstorms shrouded Brisbane. But it's a different story on the other side of the country where a heat wave is hitting parts of Western Australia. How's the water? Beautiful. Beautiful. I just hope it's like this tomorrow. A day to celebrate whatever the weather. Rachel Clayton, ABC News. Getting a tan while out in the summer sun is sometimes unavoidable, but some Australians are still deliberately seeking browner skin. Experts are urging people to love the skin they're in, to not only potentially save their lives, but taxpayers billions of dollars. The sun's out and so are the sun worshippers. I love having a tan, I think it's, you know, boosts the confidence. The sun is so much stronger here. Yeah. I can never get like a tan at home in Sweden because it's like the UV is maximum six. The Cancer Council says Australians are becoming more aware of the dangers of getting a tan, but not fast enough. There's about 18,000 Australians each year developing what we call an invasive melanoma, where it can spread to other parts of the body. Emily Hayes learnt the hard way. She used to cover up at the beach but had no daily sun safety routine. Once I got the phone call and they said it was a melanoma, it was very um, confronting. Luckily, the cancer was found before it spread and she avoided becoming one of the 2,000 Aussies dying of skin cancer each year. Melanomas can change within weeks, months, very quickly, so I'm lucky to be here. Taxpayers are also paying the price of Australians' love of the sun. Skin cancer's burden on the national health system is more than a billion dollars every year. A $10 million awareness campaign funded by the Australian government is underway to teach people sun safety habits. For every dollar the government spends on skin cancer prevention campaigns, it returns more than three dollars. That You really do need to be sun safe and do the right things because it's scary when you get told you have a melanoma. Setting a daily routine that could save your life. Meg Bolton, ABC News. Over the past decade, there's been a growing trend of women who are choosing to become solo mothers with advances in fertility technologies, meaning they don't need a partner to have a baby. While this path to motherhood is gaining popularity, it's not without its challenges. When Jabet told her family she was having a baby alone, she didn't know what to expect. I remember talking to them on the phone and they, they are the definition of your old traditional families, but I was quite surprised of how positive they were. She's a single mother by choice and is among a growing movement of women and individuals redefining the family structure that's been held up as the cultural ideal. I think even in my early 30s, that is exactly what I was leaning towards. For Aoife, the desire to have a baby didn't match up with the timeline of her life. So I figured I'd go ahead and worry about relationships in the future and focus on having a baby. And uh, no regrets. She always thought a partner and child would fall into place, but not wanting to settle for the wrong person or rush a relationship, decided to ask a friend to be her donor and underwent IVF. I get to make the decisions. I get to raise Enda how I think is best. What I've realised since having him 
is that it's the type of hard work you like. You know, I don't, I don't mind hard work. It is hard work. <laughs> I don't mind, he's worth it. Over the last decade, the number of individuals accessing donor sperms to start a family solo has risen 50% at Australia's largest fertility clinic, despite a national sperm shortage, wait lists and major financial costs. The biggest barrier that we see is obviously the need to access donor sperm and that's not something that's readily available. When Aoife made the decision to enter motherhood alone, she organised a meet-up. Expecting a handful of people, she was astounded by the numbers. I think more and more people just realise that, um, you know, they can do it by themselves. For Jabet, the journey hasn't been without challenges. Still a lot of stigma, which was quite surprising for me. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how this kid came to the world. If they're loved and they're cared for and they're nurtured, that's all that matters. Advancements in fertility technologies over the past 45 years paved the way for women like Jabet and Aoife to make their own choices about how to start a family. Now, they say they want others to not shy away from forging their own path. Roxanne Fitzgerald, ABC News. With its bustling gay bars in a prominent transgender community, Thailand is a mecca for LGBTQ tourists. But many visitors don't realise that same-sex couples in the country still aren't able to marry. That could be about to change, with Parliament considering a bill which would make Thailand the first country in Southeast Asia to legalise same-sex marriage. From Bangkok, correspondent Lauren Day has this special report. After 35 years, Bangkok's Calypso Cabaret still knows how to draw a crowd. What is special about this is we have performers with a variety of genders. Not only LGBT, but there are even some men who join the show with us as well. What the audience may not know is that out of the spotlight, these performers are fighting for equal rights. It's a surprise for them because, as we know, foreigners like to come here because there is freedom, a nice lifestyle and it's easy going. But we still can't have equal rights. Gina hopes that's about to change as the parliament considers a landmark bill that would make Thailand the first Southeast Asian nation to legalise same-sex marriage. I feel excited and I hope it would be a positive outcome and I believe I might be the first one to get married under the same-sex marriage bill. And teacher and Warawan still have fond memories of their wedding at Bangkok's Pride Festival last year. We are very excited and very fun because there are a lot of friends. I'm not like the person who like easy to climb, but that day I climb a lot. But the ceremony was symbolic only, and if the couple wants to have children, they need a real marriage certificate. They also worry about not being able to sign medical or legal documents if one of them falls ill. We just want to live together, and we just want to take care of each other, not just only two of us, but our family too. LGBTQ community has never asked for a privilege. They only ask for an equality. Dr Chai Wat runs a health clinic for people in the LGBTQ community. Same-sex marriage is like the last barrier that we are waiting for. So if the same-sex marriage law has been legalised, so I think Thailand would be the retirement hub for LGBTQ from people from around the world. The Thai government is also putting forward a bill that would allow transgender people to amend their gender on official documents, something that's not currently allowed, despite the fact that Thailand is a world leader in gender reassignment surgery. There is still gender discrimination, like you are this gender, you are that gender, but if we have this law, everyone is human. The Prime Minister is pushing for the laws to be passed and says the government hopes Thailand will host World Pride in 2028. Lauren Day, ABC News, Bangkok. 
students in Melbourne's outer southeast have been learning how to use art to tackle environmental problems. It's part of a new STEM and visual arts subject being taught for the first time. What colours did we have and what created These students are making plastic. We had lots of like greens and blues. But none of it will go to landfill. These are actually compostable and technically edible. These are bioplastics. They can be made out of anything, but uh, the variation we have here is made of a combination of agar, which is like seaweed, water and glycerin. It started off as a pinkish purplish colour and it was cabbage, but as it's dried and it's been dehydrated, it's become this sort of blue-green colour. It's part of a new subject being taught at Frankston High School in Melbourne's outer southeast, combining art, sustainability and science. We hadn't been teachers at Frankston High School very long and in our conversations we thought how amazing it would be to create a cross-curricular innovative project on sustainability. So I was increasingly aware of what footprint we were having in the art room and what we were teaching the kids through the material choices that we were making as teachers. The students turned their materials into artworks while also learning about the threats plastic pollution posed to sea life. Here is a little seascape that we made to reflect, I guess, how hard it would be for fish to tell the difference between a nurdle and a fish egg. At the end of the year, the artworks are recycled for next year's students. I really love the fact that you can melt down this as many times as you want and recreate art and recreate things. The teachers invited Melbourne artist Jessie French to help teach the students how bioplastics could be used as a sustainable alternative. It's really important to have a solution to all of these issues as well as digesting what they are, which is a really important part of the education. It feels like something we could fix so easily. It's, it's just really sad to see that we, we haven't. Finding new ways of creative expression that won't cost the planet. Sasha Payne, ABC News, Melbourne. Australian Test opener Usman Khawaja has butted heads with the International Cricket Council once again after reports his application to wear a sticker of a dove symbolising peace at the Boxing Day Test was rejected. The 37-year-old has been battling the ICC in recent weeks as his attempts to draw attention to the plight of civilians was impacted by the Israel-Gaza war. Last week, he was reprimanded by the governing body for wearing a black armband during the Perth test after not seeking prior approval. The Australian team will spend tomorrow enjoying Christmas lunch with their families and a training session with the players' children. Fast bowler Mitchell Stark is looking forward to the chance to line up at the MCG once again after spending a number of years on the sidelines of the marquee match through an injury and a controversial bowling rotation policy. I think there's a lot that goes on outside of just the cricket and it's a special week and um, you talk about the cricket, there's been times where I knew I wasn't going to play or times where it was sort of disappointing but the last few years it's been nice to have a, a good run at it. India has beaten Australia for the first time in a women's test match, winning in a crushing fashion in Mumbai. Dominant across the entire test, the hosts wrapped up the match midway through the second session to win the 11th counter between the sides. Holding a slim lead at the start of the final day, Australia needed to bat long to avoid defeat. For us this morning especially, it's really important that we start well, you know, bat for, for some period of time. But instead, the tourists made a dreadful start, Ash Gardner falling without a run being added to the overnight total. In lane, in back in lane. Annabelle Sutherland tried to keep the runs ticking over, but her resistance ended on 27 when she gloved one down the leg side, the smallest of touches well caught. And Australia's hopes of keeping its decade-long unbeaten test record alive declined even more when Alana King was gone for a golden duck. And a wicket for Sneirana, the very first one. Kim Garth added just four before being bowled, and the tourists were all out moments later, leaving India requiring just 75 to win. Australia's only hope of a positive result was bowling India out. And it's been given. They couldn't afford any fielding mishaps. As easy as they come in slip. But fielding continued to let Australia down. Oh, that's a poor miss. India took their chances as they made short work of the required total, claiming an emphatic and famous win. This is history being created. Australia now has to regroup for the one-dayers, which begin on Thursday. Tom Wilde, ABC News.
The forecast of thunderstorms and even hail along the east coast could put sailors in this year's Sydney to Hobart yacht race to the test. Teams received a final briefing this morning as they prepared for the challenging conditions. Calm above deck, but hard at work underneath. Last minute adjustments ahead of Tuesday's Sydney to Hobart yacht race. We are well prepared, but there's still a few jobs to do on the list, but we'll get through those and we'll be ready on Boxing Day. But one thing they can't control is the weather. Predicted storms could create dangerous conditions for this year's race. When you have sudden changes in the wind speed and direction, um, that can be quite dangerous. Add into that potentially some hail, um, it does make for some dangerous conditions. I don't know how dangerous it's going to be, but the boat's well prepared and the people on board are, you know, are well organised and have a lot of experience, so we'll be able to handle the conditions. For smaller boats, like the one being sailed by record-breaking circumnavigator Jessica Watson, the stormy conditions could be a good thing. We're a boat that I think would do quite well in a bit of wind. So obviously thunder and lightning is not something that anyone wants, but wouldn't mind actually a bit of breeze. But for Jessica, this year's race is about more than just winning. I actually met my late partner Cam competing in this race as part of the youngest ever team to compete in it years ago. Um, so for me coming back this year and sailing in support of the Stroke Foundation is really, really important. There's a wide range of competitors in this year's race from two person boats through to 100 foot yachts. The four super maxis are expected to battle it out for line honours, but with the potential for bad weather, it could be anyone's race. Rough seas putting these sailors to the test. Sean Tarek Goodwin, ABC News, Sydney. Melbourne City has had to settle for a nil-all draw against fierce rivals Melbourne Victory in the men's A-League. Two days after being snubbed for the Socceroos Asian Cup squad, Jamie McLaren thought he'd scored the match winner in the 89th minute. But the City captain's goal was disallowed. The result leaving the victory in second, while City sit seventh. Sydney FC has defeated Western United 4-2 in their earlier match. Joe Lully scored twice in the 40th and 92nd minutes as the Sky Blues snapped a two-match losing streak. Sydney FC is 10th on the table. Australian mogul skier Jakara Anthony has continued her remarkable run with her second World Cup victory over the weekend. The 2022 Olympic champion had a comfortable win over Canadian Maya Swingema in the dual moguls final in Georgia. The 25-year-olds recorded six victories from seven World Cup events in the past three weeks. Dual moguls will be added to the 2026 Winter Olympics program alongside the singles freestyle moguls in which Anthony is the defending champion. It's been a wild month to kick off the 23-24 season and to come away with three jewels podiums, two wins. I haven't traditionally always been the strongest of jewel skiers and I feel like I'm really stepping up my game this season. To the weather now for Christmas Day. And it's not the ideal conditions for Santa's arrival. It's looking pretty wet across most of the country. There will be showers and thunderstorms over parts of Western Australia, the Northern Territory, parts of Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and parts of South Australia. For Queensland, tomorrow there will be showers and thunderstorms over parts of the state, with severe thunderstorms bringing damaging winds and heavy rain and large hail in the southeast and central areas, but it will be mostly sunny in the far southwest. Brisbane's expected to reach a top of 33 degrees. For New South Wales and the ACT, Christmas lunch might need to be indoors this year. Scattered showers and thunderstorms in the east and dry and sunny in the far northwest. 27 for Sydney tomorrow, while Canberra's top is 23. To Victoria, a cool Christmas is expected. Cloudy with showers and thunderstorms likely across most of the state. Those storms could bring heavy rainfall, damaging winds and large hail, particularly in the northeast. 23 degrees for Melbourne. In Tasmania, there'll be showers around the Bass Strait Islands, but fine elsewhere. Hobart, a top of 22 degrees. To South Australia, it'll be windy across the state. There'll also be showers in the south and thunderstorms in the east. Adelaide's expected to hit 20 degrees. In Western Australia, showers and thunderstorms over the Kimberley and windy across the central and southwest districts. Perth is a very warm 35 degrees. And for the Northern Territory, there could be showers north of Tennant Creek and partly cloudy but also hot for Darwin, an expected top of 34 degrees. And that's it for this evening's bulletin. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have a magnificent Christmas. For the news team, for the moment, good night.